property has long been the most reliable investment around, but could that cozy bubble be about to burst? Hello, Mushroom community. Today, we're looking at the issues facing the rental industry from rent arrears to lack of government support. And we're looking at it all and seeing what you can do to chart your way clear of these stormy waters. What's worrying you most in the current economic climate? Let us know in the comments just down below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're as passionate about the housing industry in the UK as we are. So, since interest rates started to go up two years ago, we've been seeing headlines about the rental bubble being about to burst. Now, some experts say that the good days will be back once the interest rate stabilizes, so you just have to ride out the current turbulence. But others say there are even worse days to come. But first, let's talk about what is going on and what are the reasons behind all this. We'll start with rising rents. It sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? Rents going up mean more money in your pocket, right? Well, maybe not for a number of reasons. Firstly, mortgages are on the rise due to the Bank of England base rate going up over the last few years. If you were lucky enough to remortgage a year or so ago before the 14 consecutive increases, especially if you secured a five-year fixed deal, you're likely to miss out on a huge remortgage. But if you didn't and your remortgage is due, you might be in for a bit of a shock. And you are likely to pass that increase onto your tenants, who also, like you, have rising energy and food bills to contend with. So if they're already struggling to make ends meet, the rent could fall down their list of priorities, leaving you facing the prospect of rent arrears. While you have options here, from organizing a repayment plan or looking to serve a Section 8 eviction notice, the fact remains that your mortgage still needs to be paid every month. And if your tenant hasn't paid, that's coming out of your pocket. Most most landlords don't have a lot of ready cash to cover this. So now let's take a look more closely at those mortgage increases. They are pretty scary. As I mentioned, until the Bank of England held steady at 5.25%, there had been 14 consecutive increases in the base rate. While this is pretty steep, it pales in comparison to Black Wednesday, the 16th of September 1992. At 10.30am, the government announced a 2% increase in interest rates, taking it up up to 12%, but later that day, it would be raised again to 15. Just a little reassurance there that it could be a lot worse. But as we've pointed out, mortgage increases are applying a lot of pressure to the rental market. They're eating into landlord profits, with some even having to subsidize the increase because their tenants simply can't afford it, leaving the landlord out of pocket. And for many landlords, this is the last straw pushing them to exit the market. So what about the government? Are they going to help landlords out? Well, They've been talking about updating the laws impacting the rental market for a while now. The rental reform bill aims to level the playing field for tenants, but landlords aren't too happy about it. While it's definitely fair to make things easier and safer for tenants, there is no protection for landlords against bad tenants. There was even talk of getting rid of Section 21, which would make reclaiming their property even more difficult for landlords. But don't worry though, this has been put on hiatus until the courts have been tidied up, and who knows how long that will take. But this is just another thing that makes landlords feel unwanted, undervalued. After all, they're a key part of the rental system. Without landlords and the PRS, where would tenants live? The social housing sector simply couldn't cope with the demand, so the lack of support from the government has left landlords feeling incredibly unwanted and undervalued. At a time when demand is already outstripping supply, it's a shame that the government isn't doing more to support them, as well as tenants. However, pushing back the ban on Section 21, hopefully means the tide is turning in that regard. Now, while we're on the subject of government intervention, many landlords have stated that the tax burden is so heavy that they are leaving the sector. Thanks to the 2015 Finance Act, landlords have been paying even more tax. Coupled with the mortgage increases, that's another heavy drain on their income. But despite all of this, it seems unlikely to get much worse in the coming months. Cross your fingers there. Because interest rates have held steady the last couple of times the Monetary Policy Committee met, and some of the more worrisome elements of the rental reform bill, such as the banning of no-fault evictions, have been kicked into the long grass. Yes, some experts are still expressing concern about the rising rents and therefore the rising risk of rent arrears, but we can at least see that it isn't all doom and gloom, and the likelihood is that things will stabilize, even if the grass is never quite white as green again. So, how can landlords protect themselves? Well, it may seem counterintuitive, but investing is a really good way to protect yourself and help you ride out this storm. Rent guarantee insurance. 
This protects you in the event of any rent arrears, meaning you'll be able to cover those mortgage repayments without dipping into your own savings. And while we're on the subject of insurance, now is also the time to make sure that you have a full suite of cover from buildings to emergencies. After all, it's better to be safe than sorry. And don't forget to shop around for the best deals. Work with experts. Yes, they cost money, but it truly is an investment. Speak with a mortgage advisor about your remortgage rather than simply renewing with your lender. There might be a deal that suits you better out there. You could also consider working with an accountant rather than doing your taxes yourself. Again, yes, you will have to pay for the privilege, but it's less stress. After all, who wants to do their tax return? Then you know it's been done properly with no under or over payments. Be sure to keep up to date. Don't be caught out by missing changes to the law either at local or national national levels. You need to keep an eye out for your local council bringing in selective licensing, for example, and follow the news about that rental reform bill and take action when you need to. So there you go. As you know, it has been a struggle for landlords lately, and there are a lot of different things to consider when you're investing or potentially thinking about exiting the sector. But we definitely think you can ride out the economic storm. And with just a little bit of forward planning, you might even be able to expand. Now, before you go, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for all future content about the housing industry in the UK. You can also join our private landlord community on Facebook and share your thoughts and opinions there, as well as in the comments down below. Definitely be sure to tell us what you think about the current rental bubble and whether or not you think it's gonna burst. If you're looking for another video to watch, why not check out what's on screen next? I'm Nikki from Mushroom and I'll see you in the next video.